Now coming to the Q-keys test, this method is applied for the pairwise comparison of means like a mu i minus mu j kind of a scenario to find the factor level that is significantly different. So let's say we take a pair of samples, two samples, we take the means of these samples and let's say in this case both the means are 25. So what would be the difference of means in this case? Obviously 25 minus 25 is 0. So we infer that okay in this case the sample means are similar or they are equal and on the contrary if the difference is not 0 then we can easily infer that the means are unequal or they are not similar. So that's when we say that okay the means are statistically different. Now this same philosophy is applied in Tukey's test but since we are talking about stats here it comes in with the confidence limits. So in Tukey's test the way we would interpret this is that we would say if the confidence limits uh, include zero it would infer that the pair is not statistically different or the pair is similar. The confidence limits in this test uh, is defined by this formula. Let's look at the individual terms yi minus yj where yi and yj are the means of the factor level that we are comparing. S is the popular pooled standard deviation. Ni, Nj these are the subgroup sizes for the factor levels under consideration. We'll see a new term here q. Now this is the test stat for upper alpha percentile of the q distribution uh, which is also called studentized range distribution. Now what is this? It is formed by the studentized range given by w by s. What's w? It's the range that is maximum minus minimum of r independent observations drawn from a normal distribution. This normal distribution is with a mean mu and variance sigma square. And what is s? s is the standard deviation of a sample estimate with degrees of freedom mu taken from the same normal distribution with an objective to estimate sigma square which is the population variance. And in case of ANOVA, uh, nu basically refers to the degrees of freedom for the observations or degrees of freedom for error which we have already seen in uh, the ANOVA table. So to get the critical Q stat, we need to uh, rely on the Q distribution uh, table as usual. Uh, it's denoted as Q characterized by alpha K. K uh, is nothing but the number of levels. In this case, uh, we have cities and we have three cities. So the number of levels would be three and nu, uh, which in this case, uh, degrees of freedom for observations we have seen in the ANOVA table, it was 27. So this is what we need to look for in the Q distribution table and we will get 3.51 as the Q stat. Now we started off saying that in Tukey's test we consider the pairwise comparisons. Now in our example where we have uh, three cities and if we start from city 1 onwards the pairing can be done between city 1 uh, with 2 and 3 in the first iteration and in the next iteration the left out would be city 2 and 3 so the pairing can happen between uh, city 2 and 3 and if we look at this table uh, as an output from the Tukey's test uh, and, and uh, check on the stats one uh, important thing is the center now the center or the mean value uh, we obtain by subtracting the factor level means like for the city 2 to city 1 comparison this center point would be the difference between the means for city 2 and city 1. So it would be 16.10 minus 13.04 and that's how this 3.06 is coming. Now the next important stat to check are the lower and the upper limits. Now, to take an example let's take the upper limit for city 2 to city 1 comparison. So this upper limit is coming from this formula basically uh, it would be the difference between the two city 
means which is 16.10 and 13.04 plus the Q value which we calculated at 3.51 so 3.51 by root of 2 multiplied by the pooled standard deviation and then we have n i and n j which is the uh, subgroup size in this case all the three cities have 10 data points each so this is going to be 10 each so, so that's how we get this uh, root of 1 by 10 plus 1 by 10 and these factors when we calculate we get 4.11 as the upper limit for city 2 to city 1 comparison that's how this 4.11 is coming here and from an interpretation point of view, uh, we said that we look at each pair's confidence limits and find out if there is one that includes zero. Now, in this case, for for the pair uh, city one and city two, the limits are 2.01 to 4.11. Does it include zero? Obviously, no. Uh, 0 is going to lie on the left side of 2, not between 2 to 4. So, the inference is these are statistically different. The performances of city 1 and city 2, on what metric? We are talking about the ambulance response time. So, these are statistically different. Similarly, the city 1 to city 3 comparison, if you see, or city 2 to city 3 comparison, you see, the zero is not going to lie between the lower and upper limits. So we can say that all these three cities, when it comes to the uh, performance of the response variable, which is the ambulance response time, these are statistically different. Now this response time, what we are talking about is uh, again, uh, lower the better metric. So now we can say that city one is with the lowest mean that is 13.04 minutes and it is statistically different from the other two cities and their ambulance response time so city one is better in terms of the performance than other cities i hope this video was useful we would always be delighted to see your likes comments and mails as we consider you an integral part of our learning endeavor Keep watching this space as we plan to host more learning videos on concepts from DMAC, Lean, DFSS, Re-Engineering, Theory of Constraints, BPM and Operations Research. Please do subscribe to the page and keep receiving updates as and when we upload a new tutorial. Do share the links or channel details in your group so we end up creating a much larger learning community. In case you want us to talk about any specific concept, feel free to contact us. The contact details are mentioned here on the slide as well as on the page. So good luck and happy learning.